Hey everyone, today I want to talk about pulse and pulse hold. Pulse is the step component right here. You can see that the little icon is two dots, so you can think of it as two steps. Pulse hold um, is a line, so it looks like it's it kind of lasts two steps, and that's what they do. Pulse will, based on the value, determine how many times that step is repeated before the sequencer moves on, and pulse hold will uh, hold that note or sustain it. Um, it'll technically just sustain the last note, but we can get into that in a little bit. Today I'm going to use the chords track as our example. And the reason I want to use the chords track is because um, pulse and pulse hold give you a lot more control over it. So what do I mean by that? If I'm, I'm just going to enter our, the, the chords in for the example today. So on the first step, I'm going to put D minor. So I'm just going to do D, F, and A. The second step, I'll do C major, which is C, E, and G. The third step, I'll do A major, which is... Uh, C sharp, E, and A, and then for the last one I will do uh, B minor, but I'll do an inversion. So I'll do D, F sharp, and B. If you want to check and make sure that you entered the notes right, you can hold down a step for a bit. Um, make sure you don't just tap it because then you'll delete the step, and it'll show you which notes are on that step. I just find that helpful. To do the next part of this example, let's go ahead and hit track and shift, and I'm going to change the step length to four and the step count to four. So now we have each of these just lasting a quarter note each, and I know I've done this before. So now what I'm going to do is I'll start adding my pulse and my pulse hold. So if I put a pulse of four on this, it's going to play it, actually I'll do five. It's going to play it five times before it moves on. So pulse one doesn't seem to really do anything. Two through nine actually will all repeat the step for the number of times specified. And then zero will, do, will repeat the step a random number of times. I think nine, it took me a second to realize why nine was included. So if we do nine, it's gonna repeat this eight times. And then still on the ninth time, it'll be kind of like it's the first, um, it'll play it on the first step of that, of that pass, if that makes sense. So. I'm going to add a component spark one here because I want this to play nine times, then play these three, play all four of these, and then play that one nine times again. So that's one way that you could use pulse. One thing I'm going to do really quickly just to show you something is I'm going to re re reduce the decay on this. Pulse 1 doesn't seem to do anything. Oops, I just need to remove that component spark. But pulse hold 1 does. Oh, well, look at me. I'm going to add that component spark again. But now it's on 2. So I just added pulse hold 1 and component spark 2. So when pulse hold is active, it'll actually sustain it for the whole step, um, even if the note isn't uh, supposed to be sustained for the whole step. Oops, I just removed the pulse holds. I'll remove the, the component spark. Okay, so I want to really quickly, before I, I move on too fast, talk about what I mean when I say that pulse hold will hold the last note played. Um, you don't have to follow along to this part. I'm just going to mute the chords track and then I'm going to switch to uh, the lead track. And the example I'll use here is I'm just going to put C, E, G. Then I will actually put a component spark on that and I'm going to put um, a multiply nine. So that's going to be a broken chord. I'm going to press track and shift and make this eight. So it's an eight bar loop or each one is going to be a uh, half note and oh I was going to also add a pulse hold four so what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that it will just hold the last note if multiple notes are on that step obviously because of polyphony you can hear the other notes as well but um, that's just kind of like a, a nuance to detail is that if you're using pulse hold to extend something and it's like on the ARP track or something like that, you're going to end up only extending that last note that's played. So I'm going to go back to the chords track and I'm going to unmute it. 
And I, I think one of the most interesting ways that you could approach this is you can think of this as pulse being how long that step is going to last. So let's say eight, let's say each of, actually let's stick with four. So each of these is going to last a whole note. So that's going to be a four bar loop just on these tr this track alone. So this already is saving us a bit of space, but something else we can do is on these two, I'm going to add a pulse hold. And if the pulse number, which in this case is four, is divisible by pulse hold, so two, it's going to play basically two steps that are both uh, held for two steps. So it's, it's take four steps worth of notes, but it's just gonna play um, two whole notes, two half notes. I, I'm sorry, we'll hear it. And so one thing I love about this technique is that sometimes I just have a chord progression in mind, but I don't know the rhythm I want to use yet with it. So what I might do here is I might say, oh, you know, actually this one I'm going to have for six, which is still divisible by two. I'm going to unselect that step, select this one. So I'm going to make uh, this one a bit shorter to compensate for that other one. And so this is actually just going to be uh, pulsed twice. So it's already kind of a different song, and all I had to do was just play around with the pulse and the pulse hold. This also can be used on the bass track for a similar way, though on the bass track you sometimes might also want to add like a multiply two. Oh right, so that's the other thing, is, uh, and that's what I mean by it holds the last note played. So pulse hold doesn't stop it from being multiplied, but it does stop it from re-triggering again um, into any other steps it's held. It doesn't re-trigger on the steps that it's held until, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one instead just because it doesn't have that pulse hold on it, and I'm going to add a multiply two. One downside of this is that now you don't really want to use component sparks because if I wanted to, like on this step, if I, I can't say, ooh, I want that multiplier to only happen every other time by adding a component spark because then the pulses will only happen every other time and that's going to mess up my entire rhythm. But I still find this very fast way to compose because you really just need to figure out the chords you're going to do and then figure out how long they're going to be held for. And you could add in multipliers. And actually, let's make this a little more interesting. What if I say three? So there's a, a decent amount of stuff that you can do here. Uh, and especially when you start playing with, when you start playing with multiply, if you adjust the timing of a step by holding it down and pressing minus, I think I did it a full 12 times there, they actually start to overlap in very strange ways. I didn't say that they were always musical ways, but they, but they are always strange and interesting. And I just, I get this sense that there's a lot of potential there, but doing that sort of thing where it's like, I'm not sure what's going to happen isn't my style. So hopefully somebody else can like run with that and show us what cool things you can come up with. Um, okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about is how these interact with other step components. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the multiply. I've talked about multiply a bit. I've talked about how they interact with each other. One thing that I wanna point out is that if you do a trigger spark on this, Unfortunately, it's not going to, uh, here, I'll even remove the pulse hold so it's even more clear. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna pulse it four times. You might hope that it would go, you know, silent play, silent play, but that's not how it works. It's just entirely silent the first time. Oh, what have I done? Oh, I moved the timing, that was it. Sorry, okay, so it'll either play all the pulses or it'll play none of them depending on whether or not the trigger spark is enabled. And it's the same thing if you were to um, 
use a parameter lock as well. One interesting thing though is that pulses, they do advance the gate multiple times if you do a jump zero, that's a video for another time, and they do advance um, ramp up, ramp down, and randomize. So here's what I mean by that. I'm gonna put ramp up three on this. So not always perfectly musical, but it does um, run through these values, which I think is kind of uh, neat, and there's a lot of stuff that you can do with that. The last thing I wanna talk about, even though I'm going a bit over for this video, is this is a bit more in depth. This is gonna get really advanced, but I'm, I, I, I don't know. I want to <laughs> start covering some of the advanced stuff. So what I did was I hit track and shift, and I moved this out to eight. I'm going to move these over four by holding track plus 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 plus. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine pulse and pulse hold in a way that's going to give me a lot of rest before it plays these. So when pulse and pulse hold aren't multiples of each other, they will just, uh, they will multiply by each other. So if I were to put a note here and I put a um, pulse hold three and a pulse four, it's going to play a three step long note four times. I haven't found a great way of fully taking advantage of that because then you end up often with odd numbers, but one thing that you can use this for is rests. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in a, well, so I'm, I'm good at math, so I won't just do it in my head. Um, my thought is I want this to come in after uh, a full measure. So I want this to hold for 16, and then it's gonna jump to there. One way that I could do that is do pulse five, pulse hold three, so that's 15 counts right there. Then the 16th one is just gonna be that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tell the sequencer on this one, jump to two. And then to make sure this keeps looping, I'm going to add a jump two to that as well. I guess in this case, you could keep the length the full length, that won't make a difference, or the step count the full count. Actually, here, let me turn on the metronome just so we can hear it. Uh, so it's just kind of a neat way where uh, if you're able to keep this information and keep these chords on fewer steps, you're able to do neater things like that. So hopefully that gives you some ideas and... Uh, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.